See, you know what? Because I heard the click stop and I thought you, I thought you stopped. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Lucas and you're watching Fine Tuning. So welcome back and welcome to my new home studio space. I'm super excited to be in my new space here. This is the first video that I'm gonna make here. Um, this video is not about the studio space itself, but I will have one of those coming very shortly. I've kind of documented the whole process. So if you're interested in that, uh, make sure you click subscribe, and ring the bell for the notifications, all that stuff. Uh, but today's video, we actually want, want to talk about this, which is the PRS SE Swamp Ash Special. Now, those of you that watch the channel, of course, know that I am unabashedly a PRS guy. Uh, you might call me a fanboy, and I would say that's fair. Uh, <laughs> but also, this is my kind of guitar outside of just the PRS part of it. Uh, the kind of switching rig and um, the style and, and the look and everything, I mean, and the specs, this is just really my kind of guitar. So when I saw this get released, I thought immediately, like, yeah, I definitely want to try one of those out. So I emailed my PRS rep, uh, and she was very nice and said, yeah, I'll send you one to check out. You can make a video. And she sent me one, and I was just so enamored with it immediately that I emailed her back and I said, hey, can I just buy this one? And she said, yes. So, uh, so I bought this guitar with my own money, and I'm going to give you like the full kind of review and demo now, and uh, you can tell me your thoughts in the comments. So um, let's talk a little bit about specs. So first of all, let's talk about construction. Uh, the body is made from swamp ash. Um, it is a beautiful kind of figured grain swamp ash, which has just this really nice, pretty grain to it. I think it looks amazing. Um, this one is in the kind of vintage sunburst color. They have a couple other colors as well, but this is the one that really spoke to me. Um, it has a bolt-on maple neck. You can see uh, kind of a bolt-on neck plate here, um, but a really, really nice, comfortable neck joint that I just constantly forget is a bolt-on neck. I would not even think twice about it. And I actually really like what it does to the sound. Um, it has a maple neck, as I said, and a maple fingerboard. It has, I don't know if these are abalone or, or they just look like abalone, but they look like abalone bird inlays. They're beautiful. They really pop out on the fingerboard in a nice way without being too ostentatious. Uh, we have a wide, thin neck profile. Although I will say that I think this is a little bit on the thicker side of wide thins. I think they can vary a little bit, and this is a little on the thicker side, which I prefer. Uh, I, this, to me, feels a little more C-shaped than thin, but I really, really like it. It has a 25-inch scale, which is my preferred scale length. Got the, uh, the PRS kind of graphite-type nut. We have the PRS uh, six-point vintage-style tremolo, which works beautifully. Um, it has a master volume and a master tone. Um, the tone control does a push-pull function. We'll get to that in a minute. You have a three-way pickup switch, a humbucker, a single, and a humbucker setup. Um, now, I did a couple, I want to say I did a couple of really small modifications to this guitar because I took it out to test uh, to play a gig with, and I wanted to make sure that it was kind of like dialed into my specs. Uh, so I replaced the knobs, that they were speed knobs, I replaced them with the lampshade knobs because my hands get sweaty. Uh, so I just find I can, I can hold on to those better. I put strap locks on it, and I would say if you wanted to make any argument for I changed the performance would be I put locking tuners on it, the PRS locking tuners, but that's really, that's because if I broke a string, I wanted to be able to change the string quickly. So these are non-stock tuners, but these are the PRS locking tuners that you can buy and they drop right in. So they work great, but the guitar stayed in tune beautifully before that. That's just strictly so I could take the guitar out and play with it live. But speaking of which, why would I modify a guitar before I did a video about it? Well, that's, that's a good question. So I wanted to give this guitar really the ultimate test in my eyes, which is to just basically not do anything to it other than those little minor things and then just take it out, and after having it for only, I don't know, a week or something, I went out and did, uh, with my cover band, I did a big uh, three-hour gig where we did three separate hour-long sets covering uh, classic rock and blues and stuff all the way from, like, the 60s to the kind of mid-2000s. And I wanted to just see, like, can I do all of this with that guitar? And I recorded a bunch of that um, with uh, my phone and the bass player's phone and all that, and so I'm going to splice some of those clips in as we're going here. Um, but I'm happy to say that, yeah, the guitar performed beautifully, covered just uh, an incredible amount of sounds, and uh, my, several of my guitar buddies that were there came up to me afterwards and were like, man, what is that guitar? That sounds great. What is that? You know, so uh, really happy with the way it came out. So I'm going to post some of those clips as we go through here. So let me briefly go over how the pickup settings work here. It's very simple. 
uh, when the push-pull pot is down, you have a standard two humbucker, three-way toggle guitar. So in this position, it's the bridge humbucker. In this position, it's the bridge and the neck humbucker. And in this position, it's just the neck humbucker, just as you would expect it to be. When you turn on the push-pull, when you pull the push-pull, what happens is the middle pickup comes on. So in the down position, you have the middle pickup and the bridge humbucker together. In the middle position, you have the bridge pickup, the middle pickup, and the neck pickup split, so all three pickups are on. And then in the up position, you have the neck pickup split and the middle pickup, so you get that kind of four strat sound. So it basically gives you six tonal variations on the switch. And I find that these are really, really dialed in, nice sounding tonal variations where the guitar gels really nice together. Uh, it's not the same as a strat, it's not the same as like a standard humbucker type guitar but it, you can evoke a lot of those different sounds. And I, for me, it's, it's right in that sweet spot of being able to cover a lot of ground. So let's check out some sounds. I wanna start with a clean sound. Um, I have a little bit of compression on, as I always do, and some reverb. And that sounds like this, starting with our bridge pickup. <laughs> So the humbuckers in this guitar are the PRS 8515S pickups. And I find these to be really interesting and kind of unique sounding humbuckers. Cause to me, they have kind of a single coil quality to them, but they are still definitely mid rangey like humbuckers, but they're very clear and kind of sweet sounding. And they're, they're just, they're not uh, kind of high output brash sounding humbuckers. They're really sweet and kind of uh, vocal. And I find them to be really, really nice. And because they have that little bit of that single coil quality, just by kind of changing the way that you play, you can start to get some more kind of quacky, telly type stuff if you want that sound, just by kind of changing your pick attack or whether or not you're hybrid picking and stuff like that. So this is a great guitar for country guys. Um, let's go to the in-between position. So this is both humbuckers on together. <laughs> So a notable thing I noticed on that in-between position there with the both pickups together is that it's a really kind of chirpy, bright, spanky sound. And I find a lot of times, especially with modern guitars, that the middle position is almost just too close to the neck position to make any difference. So why would you use it? Uh, but this guitar is one of those guitars that the pickups are balanced really nice and they work together very well. And so you get a nice clear kind of chirpy tone, which I think sounds really, really good. Uh, so let's check out our neck humbucker.
so again, crucially, I think this is a neck pickup that is doing a really good job of being warm and full. You could definitely play kind of sweeter jazz type lines or finger picking lines or something that would sound great. But also it's very clear. So you can hear all the notes and all of my mistakes and everything. <laughs> so uh, it, it's a great sound in neck pickup. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the bridge position and then I'm going to pull the push pull pot. So what that's going to give us is the bridge humbucker and the middle pickup on together, which is kind of a clucky strat sound. And that sounds like this. <laughs> So of course that gives us that quintessential kind of honky sort of country sound. Um, it's used for a lot of stuff too, that you kind of get that Mark Knopfler sort of sound. Uh, great tone. If you put it in the middle position, this is the one I wasn't sure about because this is the bridge humbucker and the middle single coil and then the neck split to a single coil. So you got three pickups on together. And I didn't know if this would be too much or kind of a weird sound or whatever. I'm sort of unfamiliar with this, but I actually find that this is probably one of my favorite sounds in the guitar. It, it's, it covers such a wide frequency range and the way that the pickups interact with each other, you get these really interesting kind of chirpy sounds and it's just a great, really interesting tone, particularly on clean settings. Uh, so that sounds like this. That is a sound that I think is kind of almost unique to this guitar. That's not, you know, I, I, you think of a guitar like this as being able to sort of cop a bunch of different sounds, but that's, I think, is a very unique sound to this guitar and a really nice one. Uh, and then if we go to the up kind of neck position, then as I said, you get the uh, neck pickup split. So just one coil of the neck pickup and then the middle pickup. So this is your kind of classic four position, or I would call it the four position strat type sound. Uh, and of course it sounds great when you do that kind of stuff. Now that I've gone through all the different pickup settings on a clean sound so you can like clearly hear what they're doing, 
uh, I just kind of want to show you some of my favorite sounds that I can get out of the guitar. So uh, we'll just kind of use varying levels of drive and stuff like that. And you can hear some different sounds. So let's start with our bridge humbucker for just, you know, classic rock sounds. <laughs> both humbuckers on together on a lower drive sound for that kind of Jimmy Page-esque thing. I can't play these riffs exactly because I'll get in trouble, but you know, you get what I'm getting at. <laughs> So moving to our neck humbucker on that same kind of lower gain drive sound, uh, one of the things that's unique sort of to PRS is the treble bleed that they generally put on their volume control. It's, uh, if you're curious, it's 180 picofarad uh, treble bleed. But what it does is it kind of uh, allows the treble to come through and roll off the bass as you roll the guitar down, and it kind of adds a little bit of a thinning single coily effect. Uh, and in this guitar with the bolt-on neck and the maple neck and the position of everything and that treble bleed, uh, I find that you can kind of vary the amount of single coil sound of the neck pickup with the volume control. So I'll start with it all the way up and then I'll kind of roll it down and you'll hear it'll kind of clean up and get a little more like spanky as I go down, which I think is a really cool sound. <laughs> So that goes back to that thing that I really like about this style of guitar, which is it's just hyper versatile. Uh, and to be able to kind of vary how slinky sounding the guitar is by just changing the volume control to me is very useful. So let's go to the uh, bridge position again on the switch and we're going to pull the push pull knob. So this is the bridge humbucker and the middle pickup together again. And that sounds like this. <laughs>
That is probably my favorite thing the guitar does. Uh, it's this really chirpy two position kind of sound, but where you have a humbucker instead of a single coil in the bridge, it's just a little bit thicker and a little more authoritative. And so when you lay into it, it in the context of the band, it just makes you sound a little thicker. Um, and it, it, that little bit of extra sustain and drive, but still very clear, spanky, uh, it's a great tone. Um, let's try all three pickups together. Again, the neck pickup is split in this position, but all three pickups together on uh, kind of a lower gain sound, and that sounds like this. <laughs> Again, very unique, very chirpy, just a great, interesting, unique sound from the guitar. And it covers a lot of space. And I find that sound also on a clean sound almost has a little bit of an acoustic quality to it. So that's it, that's a great tone. Uh, again, on that lower gain drive sound, here's the middle pickup and the neck pickup split. <laughs> Now, this next part is where I find this guitar to get kind of interesting, uh, or more interesting, I guess I should say. Uh, I don't look at this guitar and think of it as like a heavy guitar, a guitar for like chunky, aggressive sounds, because it, to me, it looks more like it's dialed to be like kind of a Nashville style guitar. However, the Swamp Ash and the pickups in particular in this guitar and the maple bolt-on neck kind of put it in a little bit like Van Halen sort of territory as far as the way it, it sounds. So when you put that into a high gain amp sound, you get this really crisp, clear, and aggressive sound. And it's just a very aggressive sounding guitar, way more aggressive than you would think. Uh, so you could absolutely play some just, you know, diabolical metal on this guitar if you wanted to. So let's check out some high gain chugga chugga on the bridge pickup. <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't think it's supposed to do that, but it did it, it do that. All right, now I'm gonna check out some of the different pickup settings on a really kind of like higher gain vocal lead sound with some stereo delay, which is kind of how I like to do it in general. And we'll start with our bridge pickup and that sounds like this. So, the SE Swamp Ash Special, how do I feel about it? Uh, I'm gonna give you like a pros and cons, um, because I, I feel like that's the best kind of way to sum up whether this might be the sort of guitar for you or not. Uh, so as far as the pros are concerned, um, tonally speaking, covers like a ton of ground and does it really, really nicely. So I'm just, I think the pickup setting and the pickups themselves are great. Um, all the switching options, it's really, really nice. The volume control is nice with the treble bleed and the tone control bleeds off in a nice way. Uh, playability, terrific. This guitar came set up in standard tuning with nines. Um, we play a half step down, so I put bigger strings like uh, 10 to 48 on it and I kind of just adjusted it to my liking. But it, out of the box, it came set up just flawlessly. Uh, tuning stability, terrific. Um, not even a tiny little bit of a problem when I'm, you know, not, I don't dive bomb hard with the bar, but all kinds of wiggles and gestures and stuff, and it just stayed in tune, no problem. Uh, the neck feels terrific. Um, I like the profile. I really like the satin finish. It's very smooth, and, you know, I can play all night long uh, with no hand sticky stuff going on because the satin finish is really nice because my hands get sweaty while I'm playing. Um, you know, all the hardware feels really good. I mean, uh, the switch feels good. Uh, really, oh, and the fretwork, as always, terrific. I mean, like, just absolutely like butter and perfectly level, which I just feel like PRS always nails that. If I had to come up with one very minor con, uh, and I think this kind of varies depending on person to person, but I, I want you to be aware. Um, because this body is swamp ash, it's a little on the heavy side. Um, like, usually a guitar like this from PRS, I think, comes in maybe around, like, eight pounds or something, or a little bit less. This is a little closer to like nine pounds. Um, it's not full, thick, single cut heavy. It's not as heavy as my Tremonti or my 245 or something, but it's a little heavier than you might expect from this style of guitar. 
That's not a deal breaker for me by any stretch because it's not so heavy that I can't play it and I use a nice big wide strap or whatever. But I do feel like it bears mentioning if you have like back problems or uh, you know neck issues or something like that, uh, I think you wanna check one of these out in person first and make sure that it's not gonna be too much for you. You know, it's not gonna wear you out. Uh, my dad bought one as well and his is also a little on the heavy side. So that tells me that probably you know, there's a, th this particular wood stock that they're pulling from is a little on the heavy side. Um, but again, for me, not a deal breaker. That's really the only con to me is that it, you know, I, it would be cool if it was a little lighter, but it's, it's, it's not a huge deal. But I just think everything else, I mean, tonally speaking and mechanically and just, and the aesthetic even, I just adore this kind of like marriage of vintage and modern. I think that's just a super cool outfit. I think it's a terrific guitar. And it's very inexpensive for what it is. I mean, a sub thousand dollar guitar. Like I think at the time of this video, I think it's like eight fifty nine or eight seventy nine or something like that, something in that neighborhood. And it's outstanding value. Oh, and before I forget, I also want to mention on these new SEs, they're doing this like shallow violin carve thing on the top, and there's a little bit of a dish to it now. So it's just like that much closer to the core model stuff. I can feel it in my arm and in pictures and video and stuff, it kind of has a little bit more of that core model look. Maybe if I do the light here, you can kind of see a little bit of that curvature there. It's just a little bit nicer violin looking. So, and I, like I said earlier, I put the locking tuners on mine, the PRS SE uh, locking tuners and they're a drop-in replacement. It's a good investment. I think if you, if you play the guitar a lot because it makes string changing go a whole lot faster. So you put a, like a set of these locking tuners and these lampshade knobs on here, and you're really into like very nice core looking guitar. So uh, if I was gonna give this a rating, I'd give this guitar like a nine out of 10. Uh, it just absolutely knocked it out of the ballpark with that small caveat that you know for some people it may be a little on the heavy side. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this whole giant review demo thing. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you liked about the guitar, what you don't like about the guitar, um, what your opinion on this kind of guitar is. I'm curious to hear from you. Uh, and of course, be sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And until next time, I will catch you later.